So we've given our snakes the ability to shoot. The only problem is they all shoot at the exact same time. Why is that? Well, if you look at the enemy's code, every enemy has its own shot time, which is like a stopwatch. But every enemy starts it at the exact same time, and then once they hit 3,000, they all shoot, and then they restart, and they all do the exact same thing, which means that they all shoot at the exact same time. That's no good. So what we need to do is figure out a way so that the enemy will shoot at random times. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to generate a random number. And the nice thing about it is Greenfoot makes it really easy to do this. I'm going to replace my 3000 right here. Instead of that, I'm going to type Greenfoot dot and then control space. And if you scroll down, you can see that there's a get random number. This will generate a random number to whatever I put in the brackets minus one. So I'll show you what I mean. If I click here and put, say, 9,000, that's going to generate a random number all the way from 0 to 8,999. In essence, 9 seconds. And I kind of chose that number randomly. We'll see if it works. If not, we can adjust it. But what we're going to do is we're going to generate that random number and shoot. So let's see what happens if we run that code. Okay, so you can see it's working in that they're randomized, but it's not nearly enough for what I'm looking for. And that's because I've got some code in the wrong place. So this is a good example of how having the right code is smart, but this code here is a problem because what happens is every single time the act method is called, it generates a new random number. We only want to generate a new random number once we shoot. So I want that code, but I don't want it there. I want it right in here after they shoot. So after the enemy shoots, we generate a new random number. But now the question is, well, what do we do with it? And this is again where variables can help. I'm going to go up to the top and I'm going to type here int um, rand shot equals greenfoot dot get random number 9000, just like I did before. So when the enemy begins, the enemy picks a random number and stores it right here. So upon creation of the enemy, the enemy is going to pick a random number between 0 and 8999 and store it in rand shot. As soon as that value, <clears throat> the timer's value that is, gets above the ran shot value, then we want to do this again. So let's read this together. Every enemy that gets created has a timer called shot timer, and now it has this number associated with it called ran shot, which is a random number generated between 0 and 9,000, essentially. If the shot timer's value, and the shot timer is going to keep going up and up and up, when it gets above ran shot, we are going to add a new bullet to the world, we are going to restart the timer, and we're going to pick a different random number. And we do it again. So let's see how that affects the behavior. And now you can see we're getting a little bit better random. Now the problem with randomness is when you get little breaks and stuff, you don't know exactly what's going on, but you're going to have to take my word for it that we are getting better randomness here. So these snakes are firing basically every, you know, not every, <laughs> the maximum gap is nine seconds. Now the minimum gap is going to be apparently like, you know, zero seconds. So you could have a snake fire two instantaneous bullets uh, it's going to depend on the random numbers that are chosen, but it could happen. So, let's do one more thing. If we go back here and take a look at ran shot, this value is going to be whatever value is chosen. And what I'm saying is that you could choose, you know, a nice gap number like 5,000. So that if you chose a random number of 5,000, then you're going to wait 5,000, you know, five seconds before you shoot, which is nice. But if this number chosen is 
10, then you're only waiting 10 milliseconds before you shoot again. And that's not the best. So what you can do is you can impose a minimum wait time. So I'm going to make another integer variable here. And I'm going to call it min shot wait. And I'm going to make it a thousand so that the minimum time a snake or an enemy can wait to shoot is going to be a thousand. And I'm going to put that right here. And I'm going to add the random shot. And so essentially, this is going to kind of turn into um, like the gap that we're going to have to wait. So I'm going to pick a random number and I'm going to assign it to ran shot. Now, if I pick a zero, 1000 plus zero is zero, or sorry, is 1000. So I'm still waiting one second before I shoot. But if I pick 9000, 8999, then I'm going to be waiting 10 seconds before I shot, shoot. So maybe this is a little big now. Um, so I'm going to change this, but I'm going to do it the same way I did it here. And I'm going to call it int. And this, like I said, kind of defines the gap that we wait to shoot. And I'm going to call it, make this like 5,000. So here is going to be shot gap. And if I'm really smart, I'm going to define these two variables up here, because now instead of putting a 9,000 right here, I can just take shot gap, put it here, and take min shot weight, put it here, and that way I'm being consistent. So these two numbers just control basically how often and how long we have to wait for the snake to shoot. The minimum number we're going to choose right here, and I might even put this in brackets just to make it a little bit clearer. Well, this is always going to be a thousand. This is going to be a random number between zero and five thousand. So the minimum number that this is going to be is a thousand. The maximum is five thousand nine hundred ninety-nine, which is essentially six seconds. All right, so let's take a look and see how this works. So if you keep your eye on one of the snakes, you should see that the minimum wait time, no snake should shoot back to back, and all of the snakes should wait somewhere between no longer than, uh, no longer than six seconds. And it's hard to tell when they're moving around the screen like that. So I'm gonna show you a little trick. Watch what I do here. I'm gonna put two slashes in front of that line and that basically turns that into a comment, meaning that the compiler, the computer that basically, the compiler is essentially the program that turns the code into language a computer can understand, won't run that line. So the, the snakes will stay still is what I'm trying to stay here. And if I run this, just keep your eye on how often they shoot. So no two should shoot the same. We should have a minimum gap of 1,000 between them looking pretty good to me. So I think we've got randomization going. And now since they are enemy... Oh! I'm terrible at video games. I apologize if I just was too loud and uh, made your eardrums hurt. But we have randomization and we can put our movement back in now before we forget. So take those back out. And now if I reset and run, I've got a pretty good video game here where got the snakes waiting to shoot. You might see a hole in the game where if I, you know, the snakes aren't shooting long enough. Or, but when we add more snakes, it's going to get even tougher. So that's a big step. So there you go. Randomization, which is going to be uh, useful in many, many, many aspects of computer science as we move forward.